Assalamu alaikum and welcome to today's lecture on discrete mathematics. Today we are going to cover combinatorics, the mathematics of counting. I am Muhammad Iqbal Bhatt and let us start. Let us have a look at the topics that we are going to cover in this lecture. First, we will start with the introduction of combinatorics. Then we will cover some rules or principles related to combinatorics. The rule of sum, the rule of product, pigeon whole principle, inclusion exclusion principle. And then we will cover permutations and finally combinations. So let us start. What is combinatorics? In simple words, we can say that it is the mathematics of counting and combining things. In mathematics, as well as in computer science, as well as in our day-to-day -day life, we encounter a number of counting problems. And we have to come up with the answer without listing those cases or those combinations for example if you are given nine digits one to nine and you are asked to form a 10 digit password how many passwords are possible from these nine ten digits so this is a counting problem there are a number of password is possible but without listing those poss uh, possible passwords you want to answer the number of possible passwords that are possible similarly if you are given a set of nodes or computers and you are asked to tell the ways in which these computers can be connected this is again a counting problem You might be aware that on internet each computer is uniquely identified by a number called the IP address. And there are two versions of IP addresses, IP version 4 and IP version 6. <clears throat> in IP version 4 we have an IP address of 32 bits and in IP version 6 we have an IP address of 128 bits. If you are asked in IP version 4 with 32 bits, what are the possible IP addresses? That is, you have to tell the total number of IP addresses that are possible within these 32 bits. So that is a very huge number and without enlisting those IP addresses, you have to answer the possible count. So it is a problem related to counting, hence follows in the combinatorical domain. <clears throat> Similarly, if we have a group of students in the class and we want to create some groups out of those students, for example, if we have 40 students in a classroom and we want to create project groups of five students each, what are the possible groups that can be created out of these students? So this again is a counting problem. Moving ahead, we know that a phone number is a 10 digit long number consisting of digits 1 to 9 or we can say that 0 to 9. So can you tell how many phone numbers are possible? How many 10 digit phone numbers are possible? So it is a counting problem. Similar is the case with zip codes. Every village is uniquely identified by a zip code, which in our country is a six digit code. So how many zip codes are possible? Similar is the case with variables. In computer science, while learning different kinds of programming languages, there are certain rules for creating variables or we call them identifiers. 
for example in c language a variable can start with an underscore or a character but it cannot start with a digit or any other symbol and if there is another restriction put on the uh, variable name is that is we have to create eight character variables what are the possible number of variables that can be created out of eight characters this again is a counting counting problem similarly if some students are seated around some chairs what are the possible arrangements means how many ways we can arrange these students around these chairs so this is again a counting problem so in combinatorics we deal with mathematics of counting we want to answer these counting problems or combining problems without and listing those different cases so in this lecture series we will understand different rules principles methods to answer these questions first let us see different types of counting problems almost all counting problems fall one of these four types in each counting problem you are asked two questions whether order matters or order does not matter and whether repetition is allowed or repetition is not allowed so based on the answer to these questions we have four types of counting problems for example if order matters and repetition is allowed then we call that counting problem a sequence for example if you have to create an eight digit password and in password we know that order matters a b c is different from b c a so here the order matters and repetition is allowed you can create a password in which you can repeat some characters for example a b c a i have repeated the character a twice so it is a problem that follows in this first quadrant it is called a sequence problem similarly if order matters but repetition is not allowed that is called a permutation for example if in a horse race you want to find out the three horses that came first that is you want to enlist to the first second and third position horses so here repetition is not allowed because there is only one instance of the horse it is not a character that you can repeat and order matters because if there are three horses a1 a2 and a3 and the permutation is a1 a2 a3 that means a1 has come first a2 second and a3 third and if we change the order then for example a3 a2 a1 then a3 has come first a2 second and then a1 third so here order matters and repetition is not allowed another kind of counting problem is where order does not matter but repetition is not allowed that is called a combination for example if in a class you have to create a group of students so you are merely concerned with combination of students you want to select uh, three students for some debate or for some seminar or for some sports event so here order does not matter you have to just choose three students say for example row number one two and three so here order does not matter one two three is same as three two one because that is the same group and repetition is not allowed because these are students and you cannot repeat a student there is a single existence of a student and you cannot repeat him so that is a problem that follows in this group there is another fourth type of counting problem those are called multi sets or and in multi sets uh, order does not matter and repetition is allowed so this is another kind of problem and these are the four types of counting problems and whenever you are encountered with some counting problem and they will fall within these four quadrants
moving ahead now before moving to these combinatoric problems there are certain rules or principles that are required while solving these counting problems or that help in solving these counting problems let us see these rules or principles first the first rule or principle is called the rule of sum or the principle of sum it states that if there are m ways to perform some task t1 and n ways to perform some other task t2 and if both tasks can't occur simultaneously then there are m plus n ways to perform task t1 or t2 so this is the statement of rule of sum that says that if we have m ways to perform some task and n ways to perform some another task and these two tasks are different then in total we have to we have m plus n ways to perform either of these two tasks this is a trivial rule but very important rule let us see some example for example if you go to the library and there are three books on java and five books on php so in total you have three plus five eight ways to select a book since you have to select a single book you have three plus five choices the sum rule says that you have five choices to choose a single book out of these eight books so it is a simple rule and similarly for example if you are having five shirts and you want to wear any one of them so there are five ways to wear any shirt or for example if you have uh, three pairs of shoes of one type or formal shoes and five pairs of non-formal shoes so you want to wear a pair of shoes then there are three plus five eight total number of ways in which you can wear a shoe so this is a trivial rule the rule of sum and we will see its examples as we proceed in the lecture next principle or rule is rule of product and it states if there are m ways to perform some task t1 followed by n ways to perform some other task t2 then there are m into n ways to perform task t1 and t2 so in the previous rule of sum we told that tasks t1 and t2 are independent means we can choose either of the two but in the rule of product we have dependent tasks t1 followed by t2 so you have n ways to perform task t1 and followed by m ways to perform task t2 so in total you have m cross n ways to perform task t1 and t2 let us see an example for this for example if you have three shirts and three pants what are the possible outfits for you so since task t1 is i have three shirts and task t2 is i have three pants with every shirt i can wear any of these three pants so for example if i choose this first shirt with the shirt i have three ways so this is the task one and followed by task two with shirt one i can wear pant p1 p2 p3 so there are three ways with shirt two i can have wear pant p1 p2 p3 three ways three plus three six ways and with shirt three i have three ways pant p1 p2 p3 so in total i have three plus three plus three nine ways and rule of product says that you have t1 times t2 number of ways to perform task t1 and t2 so these are dependent because with every shirt you are wearing some pant and in case of books the rule of sum we were to uh, choose a single 
book out of the total number of books out of the total number of books so there are total three into three nine outfits possible another principle is pigeon hole principle so pigeon hole principle is concerned with pigeons and their holes it states that if n pigeon holes are occupied by n plus one or more pigeons then at least one pigeon hole is occupied by more than one pigeon this is a simple rule but it is applicable on many different kinds of problems so let us see some examples so what this pigeonhole principle state is that if we have n number of pigeon holes so there are five pigeon holes and n plus one or more pigeons it states that at least one pigeon hole will be occupying more than one pigeon it is obvious since we are having five pigeons and the uh, five pigeon holes and there are six pigeons so if we uh, assign one pigeon hole to each um, pigeon then definitely we have five pigeon holes and it will be able those will be able to occupy at most five pigeons but we are having five plus one pigeons so one pigeon need to share the pigeon hole with some another pigeon that is the pigeon hole principle it is simple principle but is applicable on a number of problems let us see some examples of this prison hole principle for example if we have a group of 13 persons so if in a uh, room there are 13 persons then we can say that two of them were born in the same month we don't know in which month they were born but we can say with surety that they at least two persons uh, were born in the same month so here we are having 13 persons so this means is 13 persons represent 13 pigeons and we are having 12 months 12 months represent the pigeon holes 12 pigeon holes so we are having 12 pigeon holes and 12 plus 1 that is 13 persons if we consider that each person was born in a different month for example person 1 in january person 2 in february and so on then 12 persons were born in 12 months but there are 13 persons one person must have been born in the month in which some other person was also born so that is the prison hole principle similarly for example if we have a box in which we are having red white and blue balls one need to grab only four balls to be sure of getting a pair with the same color so here the four balls are pigeons and the color of these balls are the pigeon holes since we are only having three colors red white and blue so if we pick any four balls out of this box at least two balls will be having same color since there are only three colors and we have picked four balls and that definitely with the help of this pigeon hole principle we can say that two balls are having the same color let us take some another example for example if you have n pairs of distinct shoes you have n pairs of distinct shoes different types of shoes by choosing n plus one single shoes you are certain to have a pair so here if you look at the problem we are having n pairs and when you take n plus one single shoes that means at least two two shoes are from the same pair another example is 
in a group if in a party there are three men and five women and we want to arrange these men and women in a row then at least two women will be next to each other so there will be two women that will be next to each other so how is this possible let us see it on a whiteboard so this is the problem if three men and five women in a party are arranged in a row then at least two women will be next to each other let us create this problem so we are having three men so if we put these three men in a row so i have arranged these three men in a way that no man is next to another man now there are four gaps in which i can fill these women gap one gap two three and four so i can consider these gaps as pigeon holes so i can consider these gaps as pigeon holes so there are only four pigeon holes but we are having five women means we are having five pigeons and we have to put these five pigeons inside these four pigeon holes definitely we can put five women uh, four women inside these four pigeons and when women will definitely be next to some other women so this way pigeon hole principle states that we have at least two women next to each other it answers at least question we don't know at most or any other occurrence so at least it answers that at least two women will be next to one another moving ahead let us see another principle called the inclusion exclusion principle this principle is concerned with finding the number of elements in a uh, union of two sets or two or more sets it states that if a and b are any finite sets then number of elements in a union b is equal to number of elements in a plus number of elements in set B minus number of elements in both A and B. So here, to calculate number of elements in A union B, we first include number of elements in A and number of elements in B. And then we exclude the common elements of A and B, that is A intersection B. So that is the reason why it is called an inclusion-exclusion principle because while calculating the number of elements we include some areas and exclude some areas so it is called an inclusion exclusion uh, principle similarly for three finite sets a b and c we have number of elements in a union b union c is equal to number of elements in set a plus number of elements in set b plus number of elements in set c minus number of elements in common to a and b minus number of elements common to a and c minus number of elements common to b and c plus number of elements in a intersection b intersection c so here again we are including some sets and then excluding some sets and then again including some sets so this is an inclusion exclusion principle so let us see on the whiteboard why this formula why we are including some areas and excluding some areas so in case of three uh, two sets if we have two sets set a and set b and in set a this is set b in set a 
I am having some elements 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So if we check what are the total number of elements, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. There are total 10 elements, means n number of elements in A union B should be equal to 10. Now let us see the formula. In formula, the formula says that number of elements in A plus number of elements in B minus number of elements in A intersection B. So let us take the number of elements in E. In A, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, 6 elements. Plus in B, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, 6 elements. So 6 plus 6 is equal to 12. If we don't exclude this area, then there are 12 elements. But in actual, but actually we are having only 10 elements. Why is this answer? Because there are some elements which are common, which were counted twice. While counting the number of elements, we have counted 5 and 6. And while counting the number of elements in set B, we have again counted 5 and 6. So this means we have counted this area twice and this area has been counted twice and we need to exclude it once that is the reason minus a number of elements in a intersection b a intersection b means the number of common elements that is two we have to exclude two so 12 minus 2 is 10 so there are 10 elements so that is the reason why we are including some areas and excluding some areas let us see it for three sets. If we have three sets, set A, set B, and some set C. So for example, there are elements in set A, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Now, what we have to do? The formula says the number of elements in A union B union C is equal to number of elements in A plus number of elements in B plus number of elements in C plus minus number of elements in A union B, A intersection B, minus number of elements in A intersection C, minus number of elements in B intersection C, plus number of elements in A intersection B intersection C. This is the formula. Now let us see. First, number of elements in A. In A there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 elements. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. These 6 elements belong to A. Plus number of elements in B. This is set A, this is set B and this is set C. In B there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 elements. In C there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 elements. Now see, while counting number of elements in A, we have counted 4, 5 and 6. So 4, 5 and 6 were counted. But again, when we counted number of elements in set B, 6 and 5 was repeated. It was again counted. So it was counted twice. While counting number of elements in C, 5 was counted thrice and 4 was counted twice. So that is the reason why we are then excluding number of elements in A intersection B. A intersection B. So we have counted this 6 twice, 5 to twice while counting A and B. We need to exclude it. So number of elements common to A and B are 2. So we need to subtract these two. So it was subtracted. 
again it was subtitled once yeah similarly while counting number of elements in c we counted 5 and 4 which were which was already counted in a and b so we need to exclude a intersection c a intersection c a intersection c has two elements so we need to exclude these two elements then we need to exclude b intersection c because this 8 was counted with c and then again with b this 5 was counted with c again with b so we need to exclude these 5 and 8 so there are two elements but if you look at it closely this 5 which is common between a c and b it was counted thrice but then it was removed excluded three times it was exclusive excluded when we decrease it when we excluded a intersection b a intersection b it was excluded it was again excluded with a intersection c intersection c it was excluded it was again excluded when b intersection c b intersection c it was excluded so this means this five was removed three times it has not been added and we need to add back those elements which are common to all the three elements a intersection b intersection c that is the reason we are this including this a intersection b intersection c so there is one only one element that is common between these three so in total we got 6 plus 4 12 10 plus 4 is 14 minus 6 plus 1 this is 8 plus 1 9 so there are nine elements so we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and 9 total nine elements so this is inclusion exclusion principle and this inclusion exclusion principle is very important principle that tells us the number of elements in union of two or more sets so now you understand why we are including some areas and then excluding some areas and then including some areas once again now let us see some examples of inclusion exclusion principle how where inclusion exclusion principle is applied to find the answer to certain problems so let us move again to whiteboard so here is the problem in a group of students we have 10 that read greater kashmir 15 students read kashmir times and seven read both greater kashmir and kashmir times now you have to find the number of students total number of the students so here we have given let us uh, denote greater kashmir students with set g kashmir times students with set t and those who read both that is g intersection t so we have number of elements means number of students that read greater kashmir is equal to 10 number of students that read kashmir times is 15 and number of students that read both a not a sorry it is g intersection t that is 7 so according to inclusion exclusion principle total number of students is that is a union b that is equal to number of elements that number of students reading greater kashmir number of students reading times minus number of students that read both the papers so ng is 10 times is 15 minus both are 7 so 10 plus 15 is 25 minus 7 that is 18 so there are 18 students in total so this is how you can use the inclusion exclusion principle to solve such kinds of problems let us take another problem 
the problem is with three sets find the number of mathematics students at college taking at least one of the languages french german russian and we are giving some data so you have to find the number of students uh, that is union of french german and russian at least to take one of the languages so the data given data is there are 65 that study french 20 that study french and german 45 that study german only 25 that study french and german french and russian 42 that study russian 15 that study german and russian and there are eight that study all the three languages so now we have to find at least uh, the total number of students uh, that take at least one of these languages so we can represent these different classes uh, with the help of symbols french students with f german students with g and russian students with r set then number of elements in f is 65 number of elements in f intersection g that is 20 those who study german those are 45 those who study french and russian those are 25 those who study russian those are 42 those who study german and russian those are 15 and those who study all the three languages a intersection b not a but rather it is french intersection german intersection russian that is eight now you have to answer this question it is easy now because we can use the inclusion exclusion principle to answer this question according to inclusion exclusion principle number of students that total number of students that is f union g union r so so those who take at least uh, either french or german or russian in when uh, student is falling in any one of these languages so that is equal to number of elements those who study french that is 65 plus those who study german that is 45 those who study russian 42 minus minus french intersection german french intersection german where is that french intersection german 20 minus german intersection russian german intersection russian that is 15 minus french intersection russian french intersection russian that is 25 plus those who study all the three languages f intersection g intersection r that is it so if you solve this the total answer comes out to be 100 means there are total 100 students and each student takes at least any one of these language subjects so in a uh, there are different kinds of problems of such nature that you can answer with the help of this inclusion exclusion principle. Now let us move to permutations versus combinations. So what is the difference between permutations and combinations? 
let us take two examples the first example is making a mixed juice of apples grapes and guava so you are given three kinds of fruits and you have to make a juice out of these three fruits now if you look at this problem we don't care in what order fruits are mixed whether you first mix the juice of apple or orange uh, grapes or guava so it doesn't matter because the resultant juice will always be same so here order does not matter we are just concerned with how to combine the juices of these three fruits to make the resultant juice so it is a combination problem because in a combination problems we are merely concerned with combining different kinds of objects or elements and the order in which they are combined does not matter now let us look at another example we have to make a 10 digit mobile number now you see that a mobile number 9419011111 is not same as 11119419 though both the numbers are having the same number of digits 9 twice 4 1 times 1 6 times so these two numbers are having same number of digits but here order matters because these two numbers are different so we can say that arranging digits because we are arranging these digits in some order to create an arrangement is a permutation or it is also called an arrangement so permutation is when the order matters and we are concerned with arrangement of different objects and combination is when we want to combine different kinds of objects and we are not concerned with their order so that is the main difference between a permutation and a combination and whenever you are given any problem of such kind first ask the question whether the order matters or not if order matters then it is a permutation problem or an arrangement problem and if order does not matter then it is a combination problem now let us take these individually first permutation is so what is a permutation a permutation is an ordered arrangement of elements of some set s this set s can be anything it can be a set of persons a set of numbers set of objects or anything set of symbols set of uh, nodes set of uh, uh, different kinds of uh, objects and in permutation we are concerned with an ordered arrangement of these elements so it is the re rearrangement of objects or symbols into distinguishable sequences because whenever we are creating a permutation that is distinguishable from some other permutation when we set things in order we say we have made an arrangement when we change the order we say we have changed the arrangement so each of the arrangement that can be made by taking some or all of numbers is known as a permutation or simply an arrangement for example if we have a set s having three elements a b and c then if we create a permutation cba it is different from the permutation bca though both the permutations are having same number of elements same elements but these two are different because order matters cba for example if cba is a password then it is different from bca so these are two different passwords then another nature of this problem is, is or permutation so while creating a permutation if we are given a set with n elements either we can take a permutation of all the n elements as in the previous example or we can choose a subset of these elements so from a set s with n elements if we are given n elements and we make a permutation of only or elements where or is less than n we are taking only R elements. Then it is called an R permutation. And we denote it by P with N R. There are other notations as well where N is written at the top uh, left corner of the P and R is written at the bottom right corner of P. 
So these are different ways of uh, representing these permutations, but this is the most adapted notation P n comma R. Mean is a permutation of n objects taken R at a time, taken R elements. For example, from a deck of 52 cards, because we know there are 52 cards in a uh, deck. So if we create a permutation of these five cards, an ace of diamond, a five of hearts, and so on. And here, if the game is so that order matters, then we say that it is a five permutation of set of cards. Because there are 52 cards and we are only taking a permutation of five cards. So the possible five card permutations are represented as, so if we want to know the total number of five card permutations of 52 cards, that is represented as P of 52 comma 5. So let us move ahead. Now the formula. Number of permutations of n different things taken R at a time. So we want to know the number of permutations. Mean is possible permutations that can be formed from n different things taken R at a time. Here is the formula for it. P of n comma r is equal to n factorial divided by n minus r factorial. Why do you know that factorial means multiplying a number n with n minus 1 and n minus 2 so on until 1. And there is a condition that factorial of 0 is 1. So for example, if n is equal to 4, then 4 factorial is equal to 4 into 4 minus 1 is 3 into 4 minus 2 is 2 into 1 so that is equivalent to 24 so similarly if we have 5 factorial and we can see that is equal to 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 so this is the formula to find the permutations now let us understand it on a whiteboard with some examples. Now let us understand this formula of permutations. We know that number of permutations of n different things taken R at a time is given by this formula. Now let us see this with the help of some example. Since we have total of n different things and out of these n things we want to choose r things so let us take our r as a box and we want to select r boxes out of these n objects so we have n different objects and we want to fill these are fields. So the number of ways to fill the first box we have one, two, three, four, dash, dash, dash up to R <coughs> things. The number of ways to fill this first box is definitely n because we have n things, n objects. So there are n ways to fill up this first place. Since a repetition is not allowed, the number of ways to fill this second box will definitely be n minus 1. Why n minus 1? Because one number has already been used to fill this first place and that cannot be repeated in this second place. So there will be n minus 1 ways to fill up this second place. Now for the third place there will be n minus two ways to fill up this box because we have n objects the first object has been occupied by the first place the second has been occupied by the second place and there will be n minus two objects that we can use to fill this third box similarly there will be n minus three n minus four dash 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 and up to this point there will be 
n minus r minus 1. Why r minus 1? Because there are total r objects and we have to fill n times. This is n, then n minus 1, n minus 2, n minus 3, n minus 4, dash, dash, dash. If we have r places, we are starting with 1, 2, 3, 4, and this will be r minus 1th place since there are total r places. So we can write it as n minus r minus 1, which is equal to n minus r minus minus plus 1 base. So this is our. So now here we have a multiplication problem that we can apply the rule of product. What are the total ways to fill up these R places? The first is having n ways to fill up. The second is having n minus one ways. The third is having n minus two ways. So if we want to find the total permutations of n objects taken R at a time, so we get n into n minus one into n minus two dash 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 n minus r plus one. So according to multiplication principle, we can say that the first place can be filled with n objects, but for the second place we have n minus one objects choices. For third we have n minus two and so on until this r we have n minus r minus one choices. Now, you know the factorial formula n factorial is equal to n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 into n minus 3 dash dash, dash 3 into 1. So, this is the formula. We are having n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 into dash dash, dash n minus r plus 1. So the next place will be if we want to add the next place to this to make it a factorial that will be n minus r. Why n minus r? Because this is n minus r plus 1 and we are moving towards the right places. So if we want to make this as n factorial we have reached up to n minus r plus 1. The next term will be n minus r and the next term will be n minus r minus 1 and next will be n minus r and so on up to 1. So now we have n minus r plus 1 and we want to make it an n factorial then we need to multiply it with n minus r factorial because n minus r factorial places are missing from this formula. So since we cannot multiply it, since the actual formula is n into n minus 1, so we can divide and multiply with the same number, n minus r factorial. So this is n minus r factorial. So n minus r factorial. So our formula becomes p of n comma r is equal to this whole term is now n factorial divided by n minus r factorial. I am repeating you once again. First we have n objects and we want to fill these r places. The choices to fill the first place are n because we have n objects. Since repetition is not allowed, the second place can be filled with n minus 1 object. Since one object has already been taken by first place. And the third object will, third place will have n minus 2 choices and so on until we have n minus r minus 1 choices. So using the multiplication rule, we can count the total number of possibilities of filling all these r places. That is the formula P of n comma r. That is equal to n into n minus 1 to n minus 2 into n minus 3 up to n minus r minus 1 
which is equal to n minus r plus 1. In order to make this upper term a factorial, so for example, I will show you with the help of an example. If n is 9, so I will have take n equal to 9. This formula will be equal to 9 into 9 minus 1 is 8 into 9 minus 2 is 7 into let us take for example r equal to 3 or 4 for example so it will be then 9 8 7 6 is n is given that is 9 minus r is given 4 plus 1 9 minus 4 is 5 plus 1 is 6. So we will have this last term as 6. So I am having 9 into 8 into 7 into 6. Now I want to make this a 9 factorial. A 9 factorial is equal to 9 into 8 into 7 into 6. Then I have to multiply it with 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1. So if I multiply and divide it with the same number, 5 into 4, into 3 into 2 into 1. If you check 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1, this is 5 factorial. Same I have done here. n is 9, r is 4, 9 minus 4 is 5. I have multiplied it with n factorial. And I have also divided it with this n factorial. So this is 5 factorial. And this is 5. So that is what I am doing in this formula. So finally I got n comma r is equal to n factorial divided by n minus r factorial. So that is the formula. Now let us take some examples to understand this formula and how to use it to solve some problems. Let us take the example number of passwords that can be formed from for example 10 digits we are given 10 digits 0 to 9 and we want to create a password of 5 digits so you are given a problem that you have to create passwords of 5 digits from 10 characters 0 to 9 so here n is given as 10 we have 10 places and r is given as 5 since we have to take the 5 so the problem is p of 10 comma 5 creating passwords of length 5 from 10 digits so since the formula is equal to n factorial divided by n minus r factorial n is 10 10 factorial divided by n minus r n is 10 minus r is 5 factorial, which is equal to 10 factorial divided by 10 minus 5 is 5 factorial which is further equal to since 10 factorial can be written as 10 into 9 into 8 into 7 into 6 into 5 factorial since 5 factorial is equal to 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 that is 10 factorial divided by 5 factorial this 5 factorial 5 factorial will cancel out and i will be having 10 into 9 into 8 into 7 into 6 which is equal to 30240 so there are 30240 ways to create five digit passwords out of 10 digits let us take some another example now let us consider in a deck of 52 cards if we take five cards at a time tell me the number of permutations that are possible 
that is the number of five card hands that can be dealt so we are giving given 52 cards in total and we have to take a hand of five cards at a time so what are the total number of permutations that are possible so this is again a permutation problem of p of 52 comma 5 since we have total 52 cards and we have to take five cards at a time so that is equivalent to 52 factorial divided by 52 minus 5 factorial which is equal to 52 factorial divided by 52 minus 5 is 47 factorial and now again 52 factorial can be written as 52 into 51 into 50 into 49 into 48 into 47 factorial divided by 47 factorial so this 47 factorial and this 47 factorial will cancel out and we will get 52 into 51 into 50 into 49 into 48 which is a huge number equivalent to 3118 75800. So these are the possible ways of drawing five cards out of 52 cards if order matters and repetition is not allowed. Now let us take one more example. If we are given a word MAST and we want to find how many words of length 3 can be formed from it. How many distinct 3 words of length 3 can be formed from this word so here this is the problem of p we have total four characters four and we want to take three at a time so it is equivalent to four factorial divided by four minus three factorial which is equal to four factorial divided by one factorial And which is equal to 4 factorial and 4 factorial is equal to 24 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 so these are some of the examples of permutations hope you got the concept so this was regarding permutations now move towards the combinations so combination it is the selection of elements from some set s or while selecting elements we don't consider the order so it is an unordered collection of unique size in a permutation the order of the occurrence of the object or the arrangement is important but in combination the order of the occurrence of the object is not important here we are not concerned with the order so for example if we have a set s equal to abc and then choosing a group if these are some students a b and c and we want to choose a group CBA it is same as the group BCA because C is included in the group and here again C is included B is included in this group and again here and A is included here and here so these two sets are same and we say that it is a combination not a permutation again we can have our combination means if we are given a set with n elements and we take combination of only r elements then it is called an r combination and it is denoted by c of n comma r a combination of n elements taken r at a time so if we are given for example 
50 players and we want to make a team of 11 players for a cricket team so taking 11 members out of 50 is a combination problem we want to combine so total number of teams 11 member teams that can be formed out of 50 players is p uh, uh, sorry it is a, a c of 50 comma 11 i have written p it is combination problem c of 50 comma 11 So the formula, the number of combinations of n different things taken are at a time is given by. So you can uh, uh, understand that since in permutation the order matters, but in case of combination we are not concerned with order. So since A B C is same as C B A, so in permutation it will be count counted. These will be counted as two different instances but in combination a b c and c b a will be considered a single instance so here the number of combinations will be less than number of permutations so the number of permutations was n factorial divided by n minus r factorial and we are again reducing it by a factor of r factorial so here you can see that n is the number of items total number of items and r is the number of items that are selected in the group now let us understand it on a whiteboard with some examples this is the formula for combinations so how is this formula derived it is derived from the permutations formula because we know that p of n comma r is equivalent to n factorial divided by n minus r factorial but you know that there is a relationship between a permutation and a combination we can write permutation in terms of combination so we can write permutation n comma r in terms of c of n comma r as already told that the number of permutations will be more than number of combinations since in combinations the order does not matter for example if i have four letters a b c and d and i want to create sorry three digit i want to create a permutation of uh, some number uh, these digit uh, letters taken three at a time so if i take this a b c another c b a another is b e, c a so if you look at closely in permutations a b c is a different permutation c b a is a different b c is a different and so on so how many arrangements are possible with these three letters a b and c so there are size is three three factorial arrangements possible one is a b c another is c b a another is b c a another is uh, C A B and so on. Three into two is six. There are six arrangements possible. Now, out of these six arrangements, only one is considered in a combination. A B C will be considered. C B A will be discussed discarded because in combination it is equivalent to this, and B C A will be discarded. So, we can write permutation. As combination then we have to multiply it by some factor and that factor is R factorial why R factorial because we are reducing R factorial terms from this while considering a combination because ABC 
CBA, BCA, ABC, CAB, CBA, these six combinations will be rejected. And that is three factorial combinations will be rejected. And if we want to equate uh, this uh, permutation and combination, then we have to multiply it with their R factorial. So we can write P of N comma R is equivalent to C of N comma R combination of n objects taken r at, at a time multiplied by r factorial because in combinations we are reducing these r factorials and if we want to make it equivalent to a permutation we have to multiply it with r factorial so now from this formula we can deduce c of n comma r c of n comma r is equivalent to p of n comma r divided by r which is further equivalent to C of C of n comma r that is equivalent to P of n comma r is equivalent to n factorial divided by n minus r factorial and we multiply it with r so this is the formula for combinations c of n comma r is equal to n factorial divided by n minus r factorial into r factorial so now it is easy how this formula is deduced it is we get this formula from the permutations formula now let us see some examples so if we have eight people then how many people committees can be formed from a set of eight people how many three people committees can be formed so we are given eight people and we have to create three people committees so is this a permutation problem or a combination so first question you have to ask is whether order matters or not since while creating a committee we do not consider the order so it is a combination problem we have to combine people so it is a problem of c c of a comma three so which is equivalent to n factorial divided by n minus r factorial into here n is 8 factorial divided by n minus r 8 minus 3 that is 5 factorial into r factorial that is 3 factorial which is further equivalent to we can write this 8 as 8 into 7 into 6 into 5 factorial divided by 5 factorial into 3 factorial this 5 factorial 5 factorial cancels out and we get 8 into 7 into 6 divided by 3 factorial is 3 into 2 that is 6 6, 6 is cancels out and we get 56 similar way you can uh, solve other problems that are given on your book go through those problems and try to find out whether those are permutation or combination problems and then how to solve those problems so now the summary of today's class first we started with combinatorics that is the mathematics of counting and combining things then we learned some rules of counting important rules and principles that are used to solve counting problems the rule of sum the rule of product the general principle and inclusion exclusion principle then we move to uh, permutations which is an ordered arrangement of the elements of some set s and the formula is number of elements uh, the number of permutations of n element is taken r at a time is n factorial divided by n minus r factorial and finally we covered combinations 
that is the selection of elements of some set S where order does not matter. So the formula is number of combinations of n elements taken r at a time is n factorial divided by n minus r factorial into r factorial. So and we are done for the day. Thanks for watching this lecture. See you soon in some other lecture with some different topics.